Go, run. I ran up the basement stairs with Ryan right behind me. We sprinted out the door and I paused to catch my breath. My teeth were chattering here, but then he hobbled out of his house. Get back here. We gotta go. How far can we go on the ice? Hi, my name is Melody Walker, and I'm from Whittier, Alaska. Before I continue, please like and subscribe. I was from the tiniest town, and my house was even further away, tucked between these frosted mountains. And I loved to play or roll in the snow, but what I loved most was whenever we had to go into town. The people bustling from shop to shop, the cars whooshing by, and the laughter all around. And when I saw kids, I knew I had to be friends with them. If only I could stay in town a little longer. By the time I turned six, my parents had started homeschooling me. It was fun in the beginning. I could go to class in my pajamas. I could turn in homework late by batting my eyes. And our cafeteria was open 24-7. If I eat two cookies and then I'm gonna eat two more cookies, that's too many cookies. But when I would watch TV or a movie, well, school looked totally different. I had no desk, no detention, and of course, no dances. I complained sometimes to my parents, so they did everything they could to cheer me up. We would play hide and seek or a game of chicken, duh, a modern family one, or become anchors of our own imaginary show. My dad even tried to teach me to waltz, but I only crashed into one or two vases. Still, it felt like maybe I was missing something. Like I had no one to give my friendship bracelet to or ask me to the prom. And when I was 15, my life took a sudden turn. My dad got a promotion, so we were moving to the city. And I was ecstatic. I can finally have friends and maybe a boyfriend like MSA. But it wasn't that easy. I wish there was a handbook for high school. I had so many questions. How do you get in line for lunch when the crowd never ends? And where do you sit in class? Why do all these kids kids leave that wobbly chair for me that keeps bumping me in the back. Soon, I felt like I wasn't fitting in, but I wasn't a quitter. So I remembered how kids would act on TV shows or movies. And I tried the same with Amy, who was sitting next to me. What are you doing? Oh, you gave the right answer, so I thought I'd... No, we don't high five. What are you, 10? And it got me. Alone during lunches, alone during class, and alone during dances. Maybe I wasn't cool, but maybe if I was smart, I would finally make some friends. So I posted my tests with an a on my locker and on my Instagram stories. Neither worked. And then I did something I shouldn't have. Mrs. Smith, didn't you want to pass out that quiz before class was over? You can guess what's next. But at least my teachers liked me. They knew I tried hard maybe too hard, and word got around to the principal. He tracked me down one day and asked me to join the school's newspaper. You're pretty good at academics and writing, and the paper needs some help. And it was a ton of fun. It helped the day fly by, and I ended up hearing the gossip from everyone. I heard where to get the best spray tan, which <laughs> corner of the library was best for, you know, and that Jessica P. stole Jessica's R's homecoming crown and wouldn't give it back. By the time I was 17, I was writing full articles and editorials in my free time. I also got to interview school hotshots, the big leagues, like cheerleaders and athletes. And finally, I was assigned to talk to Ryan, the captain of the hockey team, with a killer smile. So Ryan, how do you deal with the team pressure? Lonely? I'm feeling lonely, lonely. Stop glancing and tell me, hold me, hold me. I totally blurted it out. I slapped my hand over my mouth as my face burned red hot. I immediately regretted serenading him. Ryan laughed, and I turned to hide my embarrassment, but my feet twisted over each other, and I fell back on Ryan. Whoa, you have a lot of school spirit. Are you okay? Oh, yeah. Oh, Melody, be professional. I took a deep breath and tried to recover. Uh, are you excited for next week's date? I mean, game? Next week's game? We're pumped, and I like a good date. I mean, game. That smile again. I felt like I'd melted into a puddle. From that day on, everything changed, and my heart fluttered whenever he was even in the same room as me. And once, when I was in the cafeteria trying to merge into the lunch line with no luck, I was about to give up when a hand tapped me on the shoulder. You can stand in line with me. I spun around to make sure he was talking to the right person. Yes, you. Everyone gets feral at lunchtime. It felt like everyone had disappeared, and it was just him and me. I couldn't think of a single word to say, but spit it out. I believed you, I'm so stupid. 
I cringed at myself, but Ryan just laughed. Could this be the start of something? And then one day, as I was washing my hands in the bathroom, I saw Amy crying in the corner. I went to put my arm around her for a hug. What is wrong with you? Don't touch me. I'm sorry, you looked so sad. Amy rushed out of the bathroom and ran into the principal. It is way past the bell. Where is your hall pass? Um, she's with me, sir. Is she? I'm interviewing her for, uh, a story about the new tater tots. He angrily shuffled around the corner. Thank you. You didn't have to do that. That old man, he's a weirdo and always yelling and ranting and would love to give detention to everyone. Well, it seems like you were having a tough day. Yeah, boy trouble. Amy invited me to sit at her table for lunch. This was what I needed. I had a group of girls to hang out with every day. Gossip about boys or just share fries. Amy was cool. She gave me advice on how to wear my hair and which season my colors were in. We even worked on a history project together. I helped Amy get an A, and she helped me get out of that wobbly seat in the back of the classroom. And one day at lunch, everyone was buzzing about a party. Are you doing anything tonight? I can get you an invite. Oh, I don't know. I felt like one of the girls. I was also included. I have real, true friends now. Kelsey can pick us up. Come on, there will be really cute guys there. Like, um, anyone from the hockey team? Like Ryan? Of course, he wouldn't miss it. My first real party, and I had nothing to wear. I dug through my clothes, like I had made mountains of rejected outfits, until I found the perfect one. As snow lightly fell, Amy's friend Kelsey pulled up with Amy in her car with her two other friends, Allie and Emma. We drove to the house on the very top of a hill. The music was bumping, and we could hear laughter. In the cafe, Amy and her friends pulled me into the dancing. Even though I couldn't dance to save my life, I felt at ease in my little friend circle. After a while, I cut my way out of dancing to look around for Ryan, but he was nowhere. So I joined others around the pool table. Do you play? It was Ryan. I nervously choked on my words. Do I? D do I play pool? <laughs> do you? No, no, I, I don't. But, but I could. <laughs> that doesn't seem too hard. Did I do this right at all? Yeah, not quite. First of all, you hold the cue stick in the other direction. The other direction. I knew I was missing something. Let me show you. Ryan stood behind me and moved my hands on the cue stick. It's all about angles. He put his arm around my arm and showed me how to shoot. I could feel his breath, and I got goosebumps. As we played, I didn't even notice the other people trickle out. I looked at my phone and gasped. I gotta go. My parents are gonna freak out. I've never been out this late. Do you need a ride? It looks like the storm picked up. Whoa, a ride with Ryan? And just then, my imagination went wild in my head. I could see us sitting in the car, our hands brushing against each other as we tuned the radio. I might even say, oops, I'm sorry, just to make it happen again. And when it was time for me to leave, Ryan would come running out of the car and say, Melody, you forgot your phone. I would know that I did it on purpose, but I would pretend to be surprised. Then I would take a step towards my house, and he would grab my hand, spin me around, and kiss me. And just then, Amy popped in. No, Ryan. She's getting a ride with me and Kelsey. She doesn't need your stupid truck. Okay, no problem. Thought I'd offer. See you later, Melody. Amy crushed my dreams badly, and with a heavy heart, I waved goodbye to him. Don't get your hopes up. He's a massive flirt. I think Kelsey is in her car. We walked outside, and all the other cars were gone, including Kelsey's. Where are you? I don't have any service. The wind had picked up and was whipping around us. Everyone tried their phones, but with no luck. I shuffled up back to the cafe, but the lights were out. This door's locked. We've got to do something before we turn into icicles. There's another house just down the way. We can go there. It's closer to town, so we'll probably get reception. Probably. The four of us waddled down the street in our dresses, slipping and sliding as the snow whirled around us. We arrived at the front door and knocked. No one's answering. Amy looked under the doormat, and then, under a frog statue, she pulled out a key. <sighs> Too easy. I don't know if we should break into someone's house. We're not breaking into someone's house if it's already open. I don't know if the police will agree with us, but my hands are turning blue, so... We crept into the house. It was small and creaky and smelled like an old wet towel. Let's see if they have chips. I walked past the mantel and looked at the owner's photos. The face looked familiar, but I couldn't place it. I could hear whimpering noises coming from the basement. You guys, you hear that? 
I opened the basement door, slowly made my way down, and found crates and crates of puppies. But they looked hungry, and I could feel that I would be their next meal. The basement door slammed shut. I ran up to the door, but it was locked. Amy? Ellie? Emma? Hello? I pushed as hard as I could, but the knob wouldn't budge. I was left alone for hours, out in the rural parts when there wasn't any cell service. I was so scared, but somehow I gathered myself, and I remembered there was one number that could get through. Hello, 911? What's your emergency? I'm locked in a basement, and I can't get out! A door slammed, and I knew the owner of the house must be back. A bad feeling crept into my stomach. Whoever keeps dogs like this in their basement must be dangerous and crazy. I needed to get out of here pronto. What is your address? Up on a hill? I had no idea where I was. I could hear a man's footsteps upstairs, and the puppies started barking like crazy. I think I'm on a pine hill or a peanut hill. Something with a P, that's for sure. I picked up a crowbar, just in case I needed a weapon to defend myself. The door swung open. Melody? Ryan, what are you doing here? I was worried about you, and when I didn't reach you, I called Amy. She told me that she left when she'd been waiting for you around here but couldn't find you. So I came here, and then I spotted your scarf. Yeah, but she was here. Anyway, I've been trying to call for help, but I don't even know where I am. Ryan took the phone. Hi, 1430 Pepper Lane. Pepper! I was close. What are all these puppies? Some shady person may definitely be selling them illegally. Another thud exploded upstairs, and a shadow appeared. Principal Crabapple? What are you kids doing here? Breaking and entering is a crime, don't you know? I, I'm sorry. I got trapped here when I was looking for help. Please let us go. It's all a misunderstanding. And we don't know anything about the puppy mill, and we will never speak about this to anyone. The principal's eyes darted around the room, crazy and frantic. I can't trust you. You won't be getting my secret. He lunged at me, and I threw the crowbar at him, and it landed on his foot. He started hopping like mad. Go. Run. I ran up the basement stairs with Ryan right behind me. We sprinted out the door, and I paused to catch my breath. My teeth were chattering. Here. But then he hobbled out of his house. Get back here. We gotta go. How far can we go on the ice? Just then, police cars squealed onto the property. Ryan put his arms around me as the police handcuffed Mr. Crabapple. We're gonna be okay, Melody. Everything was fine, and the police did their investigation. And at school, Amy avoided me like the plague for a week, then finally came to apologize for what happened. You could have gotten me into real trouble by telling the police about me, but you didn't. Why, Amy? Why did you do this? The thing is, Ryan and I used to date, but I wasn't over him at all. And then I saw him scribbling your name and poring over your newspaper articles, and it just drove me mad. So, you took me there on purpose? No, I had no idea about that eerie house, but I could have helped you out of the basement when I left you there on purpose, so that you would know that it wasn't your place to just take him. I thought it wasn't over between us, but it is, and I realized he only likes you a lot. I wish you would forgive me and we could still be friends. I have forgiven you, but I'm not sure about being friends again. Well, I volunteered at the shelter to help place every last puppy. I also wrote a gripping story for the newspaper about our ex-principal. It was the talk of the town, and I got famous too, only because I stayed true to who I was, even if it made me different from everyone else. Oh, and me and Ryan? We're still going strong. I can beat him at pool now. And we recently went out on a date with our cutie. <laughs> Hey, beautiful people. I'm Taylor from Beverly Hills. Please like and subscribe. In a world obsessed with looks, I've always reveled in the glamorous world of beauty pageants. Mom got me started the moment I could walk, and with beauty, grace, and a bit of humor, I won every time. Even as a toddler, Mom gave me facials and painted my nails. She'd even squeeze my nose to keep its cute button shape. Ow, Mom! You're leaning too far forward, honey. Shoulders back and head held high. See these perfect dimples? Honey, suck in your cheeks like a vacuum cleaner, so you'll have perfect dimples. 
She'd do anything to ensure I kept my sweet features that won all the pageants. It was all about being perfect. Walk perfect, smile perfect, sleep perfect, 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 perfect. And those fancy gowns I'd don on stage, two sizes too small. I'd have to wear shapewear to keep a perfect waist when I was only a teenager. Even in school, everyone looked up to me thinking I was perfect. I took pride in making people feel seen and appreciated. And I also tried to be a good friend and mentor. Once, I even fished a phone out of the school toilet for my best friend, Renee. Did you just? Let's not mention this to anyone, okay? I don't want people to know I stick my hands in public toilets. You're so perfect, Taylor. I wish I could be like you. Yeah, but she didn't know that along with perfection comes stress. I couldn't chew gum, gossip, <laughs> laugh like a hyena, or dress funky. And I felt the stress growing every day. When I turned 17, I had had enough. So I finally told my mom how unhappy I was with beauty pageants. You don't want to do this anymore? I need a break, mom. And let's be honest, the pageant world needs a break from me after my last epic faceplant on stage. I never thought I'd see the day. Well, we can always find a new outlet for you. How about synchronized swimming with inflatable flamingos? Or maybe ballroom dancing? Singing? All this hardly leaves me time for normal teenage things. I want to live a happy life. She didn't understand. And for the next few days, she hardly talked to me. But I still tried. Mom, what do you think of this era's tour outfit? You think it's Tay Swift approved? Huh? Whatever you like. We'd always been close, but I think I broke her dreams with my pageant withdrawal. School wasn't any better. Whispers about my huge loss at the pageant ran through the halls. I had to pick my head up and put on my it girl facade. As if that wasn't enough, a few days later, rumors echoed through the hall that Liam Bennett returned. They expelled Liam from school when we were kids for being a bully. And guess who he liked to pick on the most? Me! He was relentless making me the butt of his jokes and playing horrible pranks on me until I'd cry. And now he was here, older and hotter, staring at me from across the hall. Ew, did I just say hotter? Anyway, I did what I could to avoid him until fifth period, when he sat next to me in class with a stupid smirk on his face. Oh great, it's the prodigal bully, Liam Bennett. What'd you do, pay the school to bring you back? Aw, oh, come on, Taylor. You've gotta admit, my pranks were legendary, but I'm a changed man now, no more pranks. I'll believe it when I see it. <laughs> Whatever, beauty queen. Don't be surprised, but I just want to see a smile on that pretty face of yours. Did he just call me pretty? Ew. Really, the day you make me smile, I'll personally crown you king of comedy. I just wanted him to buzz off and stay out of my life. And with all the hostility built up from his endless pranks as a kid, there was no way the guy was going to get me to crack. With pageant life behind me, I had time for dating. One weekend, I checked my online dating profile. Hey, don't judge. None of the guys in school fit the bill for Prince Charming. As I was browsing, I saw a message pop up. Hey, beautiful. I came across your dating profile and thought we'd make a good match. My heart swelled when I clicked on his profile, and he looked like a real-life Harry Styles, only more obtainable. I messaged him back, and we spent nights texting one another. My heart was full of hope that I'd finally found a guy who met all my requirements. You know, perfectly imperfect. He was the kind of guy who loved tacos, but didn't worry if his jeans didn't fit. Who was brave, but never afraid to admit that lizards made him quiver. Who loved sports, but never had the knack to catch the ball. And the more I got to know him, the more I fell for him. He knew how it felt to feel pressure from a parent and want to be your own person. It felt great to be understood. And a few weeks later, when I woke up, I finally got the message I was waiting for. Hey, beautiful. I think we'd be a match made in heaven. How about I take you out for a day you'll never forget? I wasn't gonna let this opportunity pass me by. A weekend away from mom's melodrama was what I needed. And a date with a hot stranger sounded like the cure. Yeah, I chose this dress. Not perfect at all. But considering skipping makeup? No way! My dark circles would make Draven run for the hills. So I gotta keep it light. Draven showed up on a motorcycle, and I swear I saw mom's eyes bug out of her head. She was so sweet to hand me a bouquet of... Are those flowers from our front yard? Yeah, sorry. I had a nicer bouquet, but it got ruined on the back of my bike. It's a few neighborhoods back now. He was even cuter in real life, and he smelled amazing. You ready to be swept off your feet, beautiful? I hopped onto his vintage ride, which was so old, I had my doubts about it even working. But the way he grabbed my arm and pulled me to him sent waves of warmth through my body. Oh no. Hold on tight, Taylor. 
Draven parked at the local fairgrounds and held my hand as he guided me through the crowds. He was so gentle. We ate all the greasy junk food and even played carnival games. Just as Draven turned to face me, the clouds rolled in with a huge storm. Everyone went running for cover, but he kept me there in the rain. Without warning, I kicked up a puddle, splashing him. What was that for? Are you afraid of a little rain? Care for a little dance party, Draven? I don't know what came over me, but I started dancing. You've got some skills, Taylor. Where'd you learn to dance like that? I've got years of dance skills under my belt, thanks to pageants. I felt so free, and Draven even joined in. He couldn't dance to save his soul, but he tried, and I had a blast showing him all the moves. I don't think I've ever laughed so much. After the rain cleared, he took me to a gazebo adorned with twinkling lights. There was a basket of fries waiting for us at the table. It was honestly adorable, and I was starving. He really opened up, talking about all the pressure he felt from his dad, and I related to everything he said, and he sounded sincere. But that wasn't all. He was hilarious. You've got a little something on your face. Oh my god, where? Nope, still there. And maybe a little worse, but have no fear. As my cheeks turned redder than the ketchup smeared all over my face, Draven took a glob from his plate and spread it under his nose like a ketchup mustache. We'll really turn heads now. I let out a belly laugh as we both helped each other clean the mess off our faces. After dinner, Draven was about to take me somewhere, and I was looking forward to it, but my mom called. Taylor, I'm so sick. <laughs> Can you come home and make me some soup, honey? Ugh, my mom. I didn't listen to her, so now she comes up with this. As far as I understand, she's worked hard doing two jobs and still took the time to make sure you looked your best for pageants. That's because she loved you a lot and wanted to give you the best future. I think you have to understand her, too. Draven was right. He was so sweet about the whole thing and took me right home. When he dropped me off, he seemed hesitant to leave. So, uh, I guess this is the end of our date. Thank you for a fun day, Draven. I hate to say goodnight, but it's getting late. How about we end the night with a movie-worthy kid? Just then, Mom came to the door in her robe and a box of tissues. What took you so long? I swear I'm dying, Taylor. Mom, seriously? With the theatrics? I'll be right in. With Mom back inside, I grabbed Draven by his jacket. He leaned closer to me, but as I gazed into his deep eyes, I felt my breath catching my throat. Is that Taylor? Gotta go. He sprinted off, and I stood there, confused at all the emotions rolling through me. Liam Bennett, you little jerk! He'd even disguised his voice! If he thinks he can prank me and make a fool out of me after all these years, he's got another thing coming! Knowing that Liam went out of his way to do this, I was fuming. But then I decided I'd go along with his plan and call him out when the time felt right. Two can play at this game. I went back to school Monday. I was livid, but somehow I had fallen for him. And then I was thinking of my plan to knock him out. If it isn't my favorite beauty queen. Oh please, beauty pageants are so yesterday. I've moved on to dating hot guys. Is that so? He looked so proud of himself pulling off his little stunt this weekend, but I had my own plans. I wish more guys were like Draven. He was perfect. It's like we were a match made in heaven. Oh, is that so? Yeah. Honestly, I've fallen in love with him. He's all I thought about all weekend. In love? Absolutely. Draven is a total dreamboat. He's picking me up after school today. Do you have a jacket I could borrow? No. Before Liam could stop me, I opened his locker where he had Draven's jacket and wig all ready to go. Time to use my acting skills. Is that Draven's jacket and wig? Liam's eyes bugged out as he tried to shove his locker door closed. I don't know what came over me, but I grabbed Liam by his shirt and shoved him into the locker. Tell me why you disguised yourself as Draven. Was this all some huge prank to embarrass me in front of the whole school? I knew the whole time, you moron. Liam didn't answer as a slow smirk crept up on his lips. And then he did the unthinkable. He kissed me in front of the entire school. And just when it ended, Ow, what was that for? As if that wasn't enough, school security came over and started pulling me away, threatening to expel me for abusing a classmate. Let me go! You've got the wrong troublemaker! I was angry and deceived and headed for the principal's office. I could picture mom pulling me out of school and making me endure countless hours of beauty treatments as if I were preparing for a never-ending beauty pageant. My whole life would be one big show! Hey, hold on a second. Let her go. This is all a big misunderstanding. Well, kind of. 
Liam, what's going on here? I need you both to resolve whatever issue this is, or you'll both get detention. I can explain everything. Leave me alone long enough with this creep, and I'll have his face rearranged. Miss Anderson, you are way out of line. It's okay, I deserve that. Come on, Taylor. Liam took me by the arm, leading me out of the office and into an empty classroom to talk. I know you're upset. Please, let me explain without rearranging my face or any other parts. Oh, I'm sure this'll be good. After they kicked me out of school a few years ago, my parents got me a mentor to help me turn my life around, and I really changed. The school gave me another chance on the condition that I don't pull any more pranks. Oh, really? Because it looks like you're still making my life miserable. It's not a prank, I swear. Then explain, Draven. I wanted to apologize to you, but you've been so hostile toward me, which you have every right to be. So when I found out how sad you were feeling those days, and then I saw your dating profile online, I made up Draven. You're sick, Liam, and you're not very good at disguising yourself. I knew the moment I looked deep into your eyes. Really? You're such a, I can't even say the words out loud. I deserve that, but I wanted to make up for all the times I made you cry. I wanted to help you see the beautiful person you are on the inside, and I wanted to see you laugh, and Draven made you crack. I'm sorry for deceiving you. I wanted to be honest with you from the beginning, but the way you brushed me off made it impossible to get through to you. But Draven got through. He is me. We're one and the same. I felt confused, upset, and heartbroken that I fell for my enemy, and it took me a whole month to cool down and let Liam's explanation absorb me. But maybe Liam isn't my enemy. When he came up with ridiculous ideas to try and win back my forgiveness, I just had to roll my eyes. One day, when I entered the classroom, he came in with a guitar and started singing like a dying cat. And then the strings were snapping one by one. It was all I could do not to burst out laughing. And gosh darn it, those sweet eyes were doing me in. But that doesn't excuse the fact that you lied to me. You're right, I messed up. Seeing you sad broke my heart, and that's too much for me, please. I could kick myself for caving, but all I could think about was how happy and carefree he made me feel. I liked being myself and not living up to anyone's expectations. We'd have a long way to go, but I guess I could forgive him. Do you think I could steal another kiss? You have a lot of making up to do first. What was that? A lot of making out? A lot of making up! Hi, I'm Ashlyn from Argentina, and before I continue, please like and subscribe. My brother Carter is my twin. We don't look anything alike, but we've always been competitive. On the day we were born, we even fought to be the one to come out first. My dad was a professional soccer player, and my mom was a really successful business executive. They were both super competitive and encouraged us to be the same. Everything was a competition. My brother and I competed to see who could crawl the fastest, who could walk first, hold their breath the longest, and draw the best picture. The winner always got a reward. At the time, it was friendly and fun. We just loved to try and outdo each other. Sometimes, the boy next door, Nico, would come over and be the judge. He had a cool camera and loved to take photos, mostly of me making weird faces. Carter thought he could make even weirder faces. So, of course, it became a competition. And Carter wins again! What? Come on, Nico, why are you always siding with Carter? That wasn't even close, and you know it! You heard what Nico said, I won. We always play fair, sis. Whatever. Carter and Nico became best friends and loved teaming up against me, which was so annoying. Still, I loved my brother. He meant the world to me, so I was always a gracious loser. But Carter, not so much. You cheated. I did not. I beat you fair and square. It only got worse as we got older. My parents pushed us to compete with each other even more. Winning is everything. If I don't win, my team loses. And if I don't win, my company will fail and I'll be out of a job. But does that mean that everything has to be a competition? Of course it does, dummy. I just wanted to have a normal relationship with my brother, where we didn't always have to prove that we were better than each other. But whatever I did, he had to do it better. I even let him win just so he wouldn't hate me. Not again. I guess you're just better than me. What can I say? Then one day, he crossed a line, and everything changed. When we were in the 10th grade, I was getting straight A's, I was captain of the girls' soccer team, and got the lead in the school play. Carter got B's, didn't even make the boys' soccer team, and only got a tiny part in the play with no lines. He hated that I was doing better than him. He stopped speaking to me in school unless it was to say something mean in front of his friends. Hi, Carter. You want to eat lunch together? 
Wow, you guys smell something? Someone really needs to take a bath. I could tell that Nico didn't like it, but he never stood up for me. When I announced that I was running for class president, Carter ran against me. Vote for me if you want longer lunch periods. Vote for Ashlyn if you want twice the homework. And then he humiliated me in front of the entire school. You can't be class president if you have secrets. And my sister has a huge one. What are you talking about, Carter? I don't have any secrets. <laughs> That's not what your diary says. My body froze like an icicle. I did have one big secret. And in that diary, I must have drawn Nico's name 10,000 times in every color, shape, and size. Carter opened one of the pages and held it up so everyone could see. The entire school burst out laughing and I just exploded. I attacked Carter with all the strength that I had, and it took five teachers to pull me off. We were both disqualified from running for president and suspended for a week. I was removed as captain of the soccer team, and they gave the lead in the school play to another girl. I was devastated. I couldn't get over how my own brother could betray me, and now so much of my hard work had gone down the drain. Even my parents were furious with us, but I knew that Carter was secretly happy. In his mind, we were equals again. My life was ruined, and my grades declined. It just wasn't fair. Then one day, I was crying by my locker when I felt a hand on my shoulder. You okay? I turned around to see Nico. My heart started pounding in my chest. I was so embarrassed I tried to run away, but I tripped over my shoelace and fell. But Nico caught me. For a moment, I just lay there in his arms, staring into his big blue eyes. Ashlyn, you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Thank you. Listen, don't be embarrassed about the diary. Carter was a jerk for doing that. But the truth is, I only started coming over to your house in the first place because I had a crush on you. Really? Yeah, and when I would go home, I'd print out the photos I took of you and just stare at them. <laughs> kind of creepy, right? About as creepy as having your name written all over my diary. Over the next few weeks, Nico and I spent a lot of time together. And at first, Carter tried to ignore it, but I could tell that it was driving him crazy. I was happy again. My grades went back up, and the girl who took my role in the school play got sick, so I got it back. I even scored the winning goal in our soccer championship game and was awarded most valuable player. Carter finally couldn't take it and confronted Nico and me in the hallway. Nico, you can either be my best friend or hang out with my loser sister, but you can't have it both ways. What's it gonna be? Everyone stopped to watch. I was too terrified to speak. I just stared at Nico. He looked like a little boy lost in the woods. But then he made his decision and walked over to Carter. I rushed up to Nico and grabbed his hand. Nico, this is stupid. There's no reason you have to choose. But he does, and he did. Sorry, sis. Nico shoved me away, and my heart shattered into a million little pieces. What a jerk! That night, I burst into Carter's room and confronted him. What is wrong with you, Carter? Why do you always treat me like I'm your worst enemy? Because I have to, Ashlyn. What do you mean? It's mom and dad and the stupid competitions they make us do, isn't it? You're worried that you're going to disappoint them. I never said that. I know that's what it was. Look, I forgive you for everything, but let's stop this right now before it completely destroys our relationship, please. For a moment, it looked like I was getting through to him. He seemed so vulnerable. I swear, I thought I saw a tear in his eye. It's just, it's just what? But then his body tensed back up like he was suddenly possessed by a demon. It's just that you're a loser and I will always beat you. Now get out. The play was coming up in a couple of weeks, so I made a point of staying away from Carter. I knew he would try to sabotage it for me. Then one day, as I was rehearsing my lines, Nico walked over. Hey, Ashlyn. What do you want? I want to apologize for my behavior. Carter is my friend, but he has no right to control who I talk to. I went with him that day because I wanted to help him see that what he was doing was wrong. But I was a real jerk, and if you never want to talk to me again, I deserve it. At that moment, I realized how much I truly loved Nico. So I let my anger go. And from that point on, Nico and I were inseparable. On the night of the play, I heard that there was going to be a huge talent agent in the audience. This was my big chance. But when I got up on stage, I completely forgot my lines. I, um... I had been so lost in my thoughts about Nico that I lost focus on the play. The theater was silent, but I could see Carter sitting all the way in the back next to Nico, and he was laughing. Then it hit me. This was his plan the whole time. He sent Nico to distract me. I was furious, but I wasn't about to let Carter win. So I gathered myself, took a deep breath, and suddenly, 
I remembered my lines. I poured all of my anger into the performance. And when the play ended, I got a standing ovation. I couldn't believe it. As I was leaving, the talent agent ran up to me. You were fabulous up there. I think you could be a star. Me? Really? Yes, you, Ashlyn. As she handed me her card, I looked for Carter. Not because I wanted to rub it in his face, but because I wanted to share it with him. For just a moment, I thought maybe he would be happy for me, but he was gone. I felt like such an idiot for even thinking that. Then Nico came up to me. You were amazing up there. No thanks to you and Carter, you tricked me. I didn't know about his plan until tonight, I swear. When he told me I should spend time with you, I thought he had changed, but it was just a plan to distract you. I'm done being his friend. Why should I believe you, Nico? Because I love you, Ashlyn. And then he kissed me. I nearly melted right there in the middle of the theater. But then I caught a glimpse of Carter in the doorway. He looked sad. Over the next few months, I started going out on auditions and right after graduation, I booked my first movie. Overnight, I became a huge action star. Nico was there for me every step of the way. Every time I booked a new role, Nico would come and visit me on set, but I barely ever saw Carter. He started staying out late at night and skipping school so he didn't graduate. After that, Carter moved to another city. Life was good, but I hated not having Carter around. I worked so hard to get where I am, Nico. And while I should be happy with my success, still, I can't stop thinking about Carter. He's an adult, Ashlyn. He chose to act the way that he did. Instead of trying to make himself better, he tried to tear you down and it didn't work. I know, but I don't think it's all his fault. My parents turned us against each other from the day we were born. They taught us to be this way. A couple years later, Nico asked me to marry him. I wanted to invite Carter to the wedding, but no one had heard from him or knew where he was. I had an old number for him, and I often left him messages, but he never returned my calls. Then I got nominated for a prestigious acting award for one of my action movies. I was going to be on TV in front of millions of people at the award show, so every designer wanted me to wear their fancy dresses and their really expensive jewelry. I chose a stunning yellow diamond necklace that was worth millions of dollars. I left a message for Carter telling him about the great news. I wasn't sure if he would ever receive it, but it felt good to hear his voice. The night of the award show, something crazy happened. Nico and I stopped at my parents' house so my mom could help me get ready before the show. As Nico and I were walking to our limo, a robber wearing a mask jumped out in front of us. He shoved Nico to the ground and snatched the yellow diamond necklace. I sprang into action and used the kung fu moves I'd learned from my movies. I punched the robber in the face, kicked him in the stomach, grabbed the necklace, and then pinned him to the ground. Ouch, that hurts. I recognized the robber's voice. I snatched off his mask. It was Carter. My parents heard the commotion and ran outside. Carter, what are you doing? I'm so sorry, Ashlyn. I should have listened to you. But I was so obsessed with winning that I ended up losing everything. And now look at me. I haven't eaten in days. So when I heard your message about the award show and the necklace, I decided to steal it. It was a dumb idea. It's okay, Carter. No, it's not. I was a horrible brother and a worse friend. I hope that one day you can forgive me. This is all our fault. We were wrong to always push you two to compete against each other. We didn't realize the damage that we were doing. We are so sorry. We've always been so incredibly proud of both of you. I forgave Carter and my parents. Carter and Nico held my hand as the host took the stage. Then the host called my name. Get up there, Ashlyn. You won. I walked onto the stage to accept my award. When I looked out and saw Carter, Nico, and my parents smiling up at me, I couldn't help but cry. It was a dream come true. I was caught between two worlds, rich and poor, past and future, and it was time to make the hardest decision of my life. Hi everyone, I'm Kate from Taiwan. Please like and subscribe if you've ever had to make an impossible choice. Before we get back to that, here's a little backstory. When I was a kid, I idolized my mom. She was a total boss. She owned her own real estate company, wore the best clothes, could body slam a guy twice her size, fold her lights over her head, and was the coolest person in the world. I wanted to be just 
just like her. Don't worry, I eventually stopped being her mini-me. But come on, I was cute. When I was nine, I was turning cartwheels in the attic and I accidentally kicked over a shelf and a jar of old buttons and yarn fell on the floor. I knelt down to pick it up and I saw something amazing. I sat there for hours, moving the buttons and yarn around until it became a work of art. After that, I was hooked. I gathered random objects from everywhere to make my masterpieces. My mom encouraged me to follow my passion, but my dad didn't get me at all. Get out of the trash can. I almost got it. Dad was barely ever home, and when he was, he never had time to talk to me. I didn't mind, though, because my mom and I were close, and she was all I needed. But then one day, completely out of the blue, Mom packed her bags and left. I'm sorry, sweetie. I hope someday you'll understand. She didn't explain or say when she was coming back, and of course, my dad wasn't any help. He shut himself in his room, hugging their old wedding photos and crying his eyes out while he sang old love songs off-key. For a little while, I felt totally lost and confused, and then one day at school, I met April. You made this? So cool! Thanks! Found object art is my favorite! I was shocked. My art projects had a name. For so long, I thought I was just a weirdo. After that, things started looking up. April introduced me to her friends. They were all really nice and talented and cool. They didn't care what anybody thought of them, especially the spoiled rich kids from the private school across town. Freak! Snob! We clicked right away. It felt like I'd known them all my life. As the years passed, we spent all our time hunting down random items and transforming them into something new and beautiful. I still missed my mom, but hanging out with April and my friends made me feel much better. But of course, my stupid dad had to ruin it. I've decided to enroll you in a private high school across town. It's the best education money can buy. I was devastated. Dad, no, I like my school. All my friends go there. You'll make new friends. This is all for the best. You'll see. My blood boiled. I couldn't believe this. My dad really sucked, but this time he'd gone too far. You sit on a throne of lies. You're the worst. Mom would never do this. Well, your mom's not here. Then dad just stormed off. I begged and pleaded for him to change his mind, but he didn't budge. My life was over. I was going to be behind enemy lines in a private school filled with rich, judgmental, spoiled, dim-witted, money-obsessed snobs. April and my friends encouraged me to stay positive, so I tried to be optimistic. But when I got there, I discovered kids there were jerks. They even bullied their own teacher. Please don't tell me you actually paid for that outfit. Things were much worse than I ever imagined. Can you, like, not afford a tailor? What happened to custom-made outfits? It didn't help that as soon as April and the others saw me in my school uniform, they were compelled to make fun of me. Please, your excellence, allow me. Your royal hand shouldn't have to touch this filth. Can I get you some tea, your majesty? You guys are jerks. You know I didn't have a choice, right? At school, I tried to keep my head down and blend in with the others, but one time, I spotted a cool ribbon in the trash that I could use for my new art piece. I dug it out of the trash can, and someone spotted me. Ew, look, she's digging through the trash like a raccoon. Oh, gross. I was so embarrassed. After that, everyone started to call me Raccoon Girl. It hurt my feelings for a while, but I eventually learned to ignore it. I even tried to be more discreet when I gathered items for my art projects. Those rich kids threw away the best stuff. A couple weeks later, a new boy named Lee joined the school. Word was that his parents were CEOs or something important, and all the students treated him like royalty, and he acted like one too. But there was this one time when a snobby rich girl threw trash on the ground, and Lee went to go pick it up. And then he brought it over to me. Hey, Kate, I know we've never talked before, but you're into, like, found art projects, right? I thought maybe you could use this. That's uh, covered in pizza sauce. <sighs> Sorry, that was dumb, huh? It was really sweet, though. Thank you. I think it's really cool how you're able to turn anything you find into art, and I was wondering if you could maybe teach me. There's nothing to learn, but sure, I'll teach you. At first, I thought Lee was just being nice, but all throughout the week, he kept bringing me things, none of which I could use, and I started to wonder if he liked me. Since he was always acting shy, I decided to ask him myself. Do you like me or something? Why are you being so overly nice? What's the deal? What? No. Gosh, where would you get an idea like that? <laughs> okay, yeah, 
I like you a lot. Would you maybe want to go out with me sometime, like on a date? I'd love to. That weekend, Lee planned the world's most expensive date for us. Dinner at a super exclusive restaurant, dessert on his dad's yacht, and then a stroll through a private garden I didn't even know existed. I'm having a lot of fun, but you didn't have to do all this. I'm not that type of girl. I'm happy just having a conversation. <sighs> Sorry, I might have gotten a little carried away. I just really wanted to impress you, so you'd say yes to, to going on a second date with me? Oh, yeah, um, sure. I guess I could fit that into my schedule. I never expected to fall for one of the rich kids, but Lee wasn't like the others. He treated everyone the same, no matter how much money they had. And he had a little sister he adored, and he loved model airplanes, which was dorky but kind of cute. Before I knew it, it was our one-month anniversary, and Lee and I got together to exchange gifts. You go first. Okay, so I got you this Ferrari. What? And this diamond necklace, and the keys to your own beach house. Now you go. I, uh, I made you a little airplane out of seashells. It's okay, you can say you're disappointed. It's the nicest thing anyone's ever given me. It reminded me of the time I made my mom a macaroni picture frame when I was little. Sure, my mom said she loved it, but who really loves macaroni art? She never even put a photo in it. Lee seemed to genuinely like his gift, though, which made me happy. I occasionally had to remind Lee that I wasn't into material things, but he was trying. I asked him to return everything and donate the money to charity. Everything except, okay, the Ferrari was cool. I kept that. Sometime later, when I met up with my friends, I was surprised to find them acting cold and a bit distant. What's wrong? Duh, you left us hanging, Kate. We had to finish the project all by ourselves because you didn't show. It took hours. I'm sorry, I was out on a date with Lee. You know he gave me a traitor. You've changed, Kate. You used to make fun of spoiled rich people. And now you've got the rich boyfriend in the fancy car, just like every other snob. I'm still the same person, and Lee's not like that. I really think you'd like him if you gave him a chance. April clearly disagreed, but I managed to convince her and my other friends to invite Lee to work on our next project so they could get to know each other. Thankfully, it went perfectly. My friends and Lee totally hit it off, and from then on, we all met up often. Okay, that was a lie. But in my defense, the truth made me want to cry. Our big hang sesh started out well enough, but things went downhill fast after Lee, oops, did that. Don't you build model planes? I thought you'd be better at this, Richie Rich. My models come with instructions that tell you where each piece goes. Instructions are for babies. Can't say I'm surprised, Richie Rich. Why do you keep calling me that? That's not my name. Then April flicked some paint in Lee's face. Oops, apologies, your highness. Ah, the spoiled brat's all dirty. Hey guys, who's hungry? Maybe we should take a snack break. No, I think I'm done here. Same. And another time, we were eating at McDonald's when suddenly Lee's stomach started hurting and he ran to the bathroom. I followed him. Yeah, I didn't care it was the boys' bathroom. And he was throwing up in the bathroom. And just then, April followed me in. Aw, is the Richie Rich boy not used to eating junk food and all the disgusting stuff that poor people eat? Stop it, April. It's that edible sculpture you gave me. The sneakers that were made from cheese and bread and... Oh, you actually ate that? What is that supposed to mean? I asked you if it's edible, and you said yes. I didn't know you were genuinely asking. I said a sarcastic yes, duh. Are you crazy? Guys, please. And just then, Lee pushed April and left. To make matters worse, the next time I saw April and Lee, separately, of course, they refused to be in the same room now. They each gave me an ultimatum. Your friends are close-minded jerks. Your boyfriend is an entitled idiot. It's me or them. It's us or him. Ugh. All I'd wanted was for my friends and my boyfriend to get along, but everything had blown up in my face. I hadn't felt this low since my mom left. How was I supposed to choose between my friends and my boyfriend? It was like asking me if I wanted to keep my right arm or my left. They were both a part of me. There was only one person who could help me figure this out, my mom. I was sure if I could find her, she would know how to make everything right. But once again, when I asked dad about her, he didn't tell me anything. Instead, he tried to act like her. If there's something on your mind, you can talk to me, you know. I need to talk to mom. She's the only person who can help. Your mom's a lot better at running from problems than solving them. Like you're any better? You barely even talked to me before mom left. All you cared about was money. You don't know what you're talking about. 
No matter how much I begged, my dad refused to tell me where to find my mom. He was probably afraid that if I found out, I'd leave and live with her instead. Things got worse after that. Lee and April called me every day to pressure me to give them an answer, but I wasn't ready to make a choice yet. Unfortunately, that meant my birthday was pretty lonely, until my dad gave me an envelope from my mom. I was so happy. I opened it as fast as I could, but when I saw what was inside, my world turned upside down. What's this? Dad, who are these other people? <sighs> I guess it's time you finally learned the truth. This is your mom's new family. But what, when, how? Your mom was always obsessed with money. She spent so much money, I had to work two jobs to pay all the bills. She took almost everything when she had left and eventually found a new, richer husband. I was stunned. I'm sorry I didn't tell you sooner, honey. Your mom has always been your hero, and I, I didn't want to take that away from you. But you're old enough now to know the truth. And by the way, happy birthday. Is this the frame I gave mom when I was little? Yeah, I always thought it was really special, and it's about time we used it. Dad, I love it. By the way, I don't know if you noticed, but there are some people here who I think want to see you. Hey, uh, we wanted to wish you a happy birthday, and also... I want to say something first. I've made my decision. I love you. All of you. And I don't think it's fair that you've asked me to choose, so I won't. You guys don't have to like each other, but you need to respect me. There's room in my life for all of you. That's exactly what we wanted to apologize for. We never should have given you an ultimatum. I think I was just jealous that you had a new boyfriend and you were spending so much time with- And I was jealous of them because they got to grow up with someone as amazing as you and I didn't meet you till we were older. Aw, what? That was sweet. Anyway, we made this for you. All of you? Yep. It's so weird. I love it. My six-year-old sister opened the classroom door during my exam and started crying. Mommy said I'd find you here. You promised to buy me donkey milk for my skin and not ostrich milk. What am I supposed to do with it? <laughs> the teacher ran to calm her down, and while she was hugging her, my sister handed me a paper that had my essay written on it. Okay, I feel better now. I hope you fail your exam. Writing an essay about whether manufacturers should be responsible for the effects of the chemicals used in their products was harder than giving birth, I swear. Five minutes later, I submitted the essay, and when the teacher left, my classmate said, Who is that girl? You don't even have a sister, or even a mom. You're an orphan. And smart. She's someone I hired. Ask Brain 2 wrote me the essay. And how are you so sure that's a good essay? Oh, it's not the first time, and I always get an A+. In a matter of hours, I was the most popular girl in school, and kids started asking me for all types of advice on which apps could help give them an edge. Is there an app to get someone to fall in love with me? What about an app that could make me a million bucks? That's when I got a brilliant idea. I could start making my own apps. How much are you willing to pay? Oh, by the way, my name's Paige, and I live with a family of gangsters. Before I continue my success story, please like and subscribe. Technically, we're not really a family. That six-year-old girl I hired, her name is Spot. Yeah, weird, I know. Me, Spot, and my best friend Felix met in an orphanage. I'm the smart one. Like, Einstein smart, but when I was younger, I was really small for my age, so the other kids used to pick on me. Hey, shrimp McNugget, get out of my way. They'd push me down in the playground and take all my toys. I quickly figured out that I needed some muscle. That's when I found Felix. Felix was dumb as dirt, but strong as an ox. So we made an arrangement. I taught him everything I knew, and he took care of the bullies. A few years later, some stupid family wanted to adopt me, but they refused to take Felix. There was no way we were gonna let them separate us, so I came up with a plan. I found this really old couple online. I mean, like, dinosaur old. They lived in this huge house and had a bunch of money. They would have been the perfect parents, except... What's that you say, honey? You want a mop? No, I want you to adopt us. How is the crop? Oh, it's doing well, dear. Thanks for asking. Have a good day. It was so frustrating. That night, me and Felix snuck into a science lab and Spot was our lookout. I borrowed a few things to make a supersonic hearing aid and added a couple more features, like super hearing and super strength that I knew those old people would like. Hey, try this. Wow, I can hear. What was that? That's a bird. What's that smell? 
I farted. Sorry. Look, honey, I can walk and run and jump. I can pick up this car. I told the old couple they could keep my gadget if they adopted me, Felix, and Spot, and they agreed. The next day, we moved into this huge house. We had our own rooms, and I had my own science lab in the basement. And the best thing was that the old people let us do whatever we wanted. I spent all day in my lab making gadgets and apps. I made a robot that brushed Spot's teeth and washed her hair. No! Anything but the shampoo! Please don't! Felix liked to cook, but he always burned the food. I made him an assistant chef to help him out. This is unacceptable! This chicken tastes like poo! It flipped over a couple of tables and sent Felix crying to his room a few times, but the food was delicious. My new parents invested a ton of money into my gadgets. Come to find out, they were just a sweet old couple. They were leaders of a notorious underground gang that- Hold on, editor. Cut that out of the video, please. I'm not supposed to talk about that. You won't tell anyone, right? If you do, you'll end up sleeping with the fishes. Okay, they get it. Don't scare them, guys. We're watching you. And listening, too. Anyway, moving along. After a while, I got bored and enrolled in a fancy high school. Felix and Spod weren't interested in school. They liked to sleep in all day, go on shopping sprees, and run other errands for our parents. My first day of school was pretty lame. I was smarter than the teachers, and the kids didn't like me much. They even made fun of my green hair. What? Green's my favorite color. Then I caught this boy named Lucas checking me out. He was popular, captain of the football team, super smart, class president two years in a row, and even volunteered in a food kitchen on the weekends. That is, when he wasn't doing a photo shoot. Did I tell you he was a teen model? Yuck, I could barf. Did he walk out of an MSA video or something? Lucas was so not my type, but he didn't get the hint. During lunch, he sat beside me. I mean, seriously, there were a dozen open seats. Hey, Paige, is this seat taken? Yeah, I was saving it for Nanya. Who's Nanya? None of your business. He eventually cornered me in science class. Somehow, he convinced the teacher to pair us up for a project. Lucas and I started spending time together. He was almost as smart as me. His sparkling brown eyes, his perfect hair, and handsome face were nice to look at. But there was one thing that really annoyed me. He was such a goody two-shoes. I'd never met anyone so honest. One time we went to a coffee shop and the barista gave him change. We were all the way across town when he realized that she'd given him an extra penny. So he insisted that we walk all the way back to return it. It's a penny. It's no big deal. Plus, I'm tired and my feet hurt. But he couldn't rest until he returned it. On my birthday, Lucas bought me a shirt, but it was the wrong size, so we went to the store to return it, and we ran into this woman who had on a hideous dress, and she caught us staring. A young man, what do you think? Uh, does this dress look good on me? Uh, you look wonderful. The moment we left the store, Lucas started freaking out. I shouldn't have lied to that poor woman. That was wrong. I should go back and tell her the truth. And Lucas, being Lucas, found the woman and told her the truth. I'm sorry, ma'am. That dress is horrible. It makes you look like a cow. The woman punched Lucas in the face and stormed off. Later, when I put a cold bag of peas on Lucas's eye, I asked him why he was so obsessed with being honest. I just think it's the right thing to do. Speaking of honesty, I really like you, Paige, and I was wondering, maybe you liked me too? By then, Lucas had grown on me. He was less annoying than all the other kids at school, and he made me laugh. You're cool, I guess. Cool enough to be your boyfriend? Out of nowhere, Lucas held my hand. He took the peas off his face and stepped close to me. I mean, our faces were inches apart. And then, I don't know how, but suddenly we were kissing, and to my surprise, I liked it. After that, we were officially dating, and life was pretty good. But then everything turned upside down. Felix, Spot, and my parents came home from one of their vacations. Paige, it's terrible. We lost all of our money. I was in shock. Just a week earlier, we had at least $2 million in the bank. My parents explained that they spent all of our money investing in my gadgets. They stored my gadgets in a bunch of warehouses downtown. But someone burned them all down and we lost everything. All of the warehouses caught fire? How is that possible? What about the insurance? Did you report it to the police? There's no insurance. And the police, well... <clears throat> Just one second. Hey, editor, we'll need a bit of privacy. It's about the family business. No problem. I guess they can hear the rest. Gotcha. So we're gonna lose the house? And the cars? And a bunch of bad guys are after us. We kind of owe them, too. 
always so much excitement. I forgot how much fun it is being a gangster. Oh, um, businesswoman. What am I supposed to do about it? You're the brains of this operation. Save us. And that's when I decided to make a new app called P-Mind Soup Juice. Yeah, that's not the real name and the app doesn't exist anymore, but it was awesome. I cleverly designed a game where kids had to keep paying money to play the higher levels. And when they reached level 7, they got a ticket for the Million Dollar National Lottery. Of course, no one ever wins that thing, right? But the kids were hooked. They were using up all their pocket money and even stealing their parents' credit cards to keep paying and playing. And I was getting richer by the day. Wow, Paige, this is awesome. This is almost enough to pay off our debts. You're my hero. You're the best. But things got a little complicated with Lucas. One day after school, he showed up at my house. You have to shut down Pea Mind Soup Juice. Why? It's unethical. No, it's not. Yes, it is. Don't be such a goody two-shoes. Paige, everyone's getting addicted and it's driving all the kids crazy. I need my Pea Mind Soup Juice. You can't take it away from me. It's just an app. It's not my fault they're too dumb to turn it off. You have the highest IQ and you could use it for good, but you're using it to ruin people's lives. Plus, if the principal finds out you're making money off of these kids, you'll get expelled. Everyone loves Pea Mind Soup Juice. No one's gonna tell. The principal doesn't ever have to know. I know. What's that supposed to mean? I love you, Paige, but what you're doing is just wrong. If you don't shut it down tonight, I'll have to tell the principal. I tried to convince Lucas to change his mind, but he just stormed off. And to make matters worse, I caught Felix and Spot listening from the upstairs window. And that's when the war between Lucas and my family began. We can take care of him for you. I can punch him in the nose. I can hit him with a rock. He'll never remember a thing. Or I can bake him a special pie. No, you're not doing any of that. Lucas is my boyfriend, and I think I love him. Love? Yeah. He's not even your type. Oh, honey, the boy doesn't love you. He wants to rat you out. You'll get suspended, and he won't stop there. He'll try to bring this whole family down. Believe me, we know. I told my family I'd take care of it. The last thing I wanted was Lucas hurt. I went over to Lucas's house and his parents' car wasn't in the driveway, so he was all alone. I tapped on the window to wake him up and accidentally broke the glass. Help, help, intruder! He was so scared. It could have been because I had a mask covering my face, but it was really cold outside. And what else are you supposed to wear when you're climbing into someone's window at night? I mean, duh, it's practically a uniform. Lucas grabbed a fly swatter and started waving it around. Lucas, it's me. What the heck are you doing climbing through my window at midnight? I needed to talk. Please don't tell the principal about pea mind soup juice. I've made my decision, Paige. My family needs it to pay our bills. Can't your parents borrow the money from their friends? What about their savings? That's easy for you to say. Your family's rich with dozens of rich friends. Then the craziest thing happened. I spotted Felix's robot chef in Lucas's driveway and it started pounding on the door. What is that? I got a FaceTime call from my family. What's going on? We all discussed it and we decided that RoboChef, that's what we're calling him now, can take care of our little Lucas problem. What do you mean take care of? Then RoboChef broke down the front door. Ooh, that's loud. What's that noise, honey? It's RoboChef. Oh my, get out of there. My phone lost its signal, and then RoboChef smashed through a couple of walls, then charged up the stairs. We have to go, now. I grabbed Lucas. We climbed out of the window and hopped on my bike. I rode as fast as I could. RoboChef was on our tail. What is that thing? It's a robot I made. Can you turn it off? RoboChef, shut down. Robo-chef, slice and dice. It's gone crazy. What do we do? I had to think fast, and then I remembered. I had an emergency remote in my bedroom drawer that could shut Robo-chef down. Hold on. Lucas held tight as I turned a corner. My heart pounded and my legs throbbed as I rode faster and faster. Then the worst thing happened. My front tire hit a rock and Lucas and I flipped over. I sprained my ankle and Lucas scraped his knee really bad. Lucas held me in his arms as the crazy robot drew closer. This is it. He's gonna turn us into Lucas and Paige Puree. A Luke Cage or a Pecos. What are you talking about? It's our names combined, like a couple's name. We never got to choose one. You know, like Benifer, Kimye, and Brangelina. Shut up! I've got a better idea. 
Lucas pulled me close and kissed me. Then he climbed to his feet and glared at the robot. Come on, you stupid robot. Let me introduce you to my little friends. Lucas showed the robot his fists, and the robot couldn't stop laughing as it marched towards us. I knew we were going to be goners, but out of nowhere, my family appeared. Get away from my sister, you crazy bot. Spot threw a rock at the robot's head. Felix body slammed it and then gave it the people's elbow. My mom smashed a pie in its face, and my dad picked it up and threw it so far that it landed in a trash heap a couple of miles away. My dad still had his super strength, by the way. My family was impressed that Lucas had risked his life to save me. And Lucas was so thankful that my family saved both of us that he decided not to tell the principal about pea mine soup juice. I won't tell, but you still have to shut it down. But what about my family? They still need money. I have an idea. My family met with Lucas's dad, and after he saw the footage of them kicking that robot's butt, he hired my family to run security for his company. After a couple of years, my family made so much money that they started their own security business and started traveling the world protecting celebrities and famous politicians. As for me and Lucas, I agreed to shut down Pea Mind Soup Juice and live an honest life.